Good morning, Icon Church. Uh, we hope everyone has had an awesome, awesome week. We're so glad that, uh, that you're here this morning with us, um, and we really look forward to today's message. Um, uh, before we get into that, though, uh, my name is Jonathan. And I'm Christina. And we get the uh, pleasure of hosting uh, Icon Church again uh, this morning. And so again, thank you guys so much for coming. We're so glad to see you here. Yep. And if you're new around here, we'd love to be able to connect with you. There's a little um, like connect card in the chat <laughs> boxes. Um, if you just click on that, someone will get with you and we'd be able to connect with you. Also, if you want to go to iconchurch.com slash connect, we can also connect with you that way. And we'd love to just be able to... Uh, meet you and know who you are. Yeah, a great way that you can connect to and stay connected um, is actually through the app. We have an app here at Icon Church. Um, this is the way that we push out notifications for events that we have coming up, things that we're doing within the community, um, things that we're doing here online. Uh, and you can get to that if you text Icon App to 77977. Um, that will give you a direct link to the app. Um, so again, text Icon App to 77977. That will give you a link to get to that to get that downloaded um, on any device. Awesome. And also, if you need any kind of prayer, we'd love to be able to pray with you. Um, there's a live prayer button, and if you just click on that, it'll take you to another window, and somebody else will um, connect with you that way. Yes, we'll pray to with pray. you. Yeah. <laughs> to lots, be able to of, pray. <laughs> lots of connection here. So, um, And finally, we want to say uh, thank you so much to everyone that has been faithful in their giving. Um, we know that during this time, that's not such an easy thing to do. Um, and so uh, we want to say thank you. We genuinely, genuinely thank you uh, for continuing to support ICON and our mission here, um, as always has been, just to help people become more like Jesus. Yep. And so um, that's what we're about here at ICON Church. Um, and so if you've given to that cause, we want to say thank you guys so, so, so very much. Thank you. Um, well, we've got a great service in store. We're going to get to hear from Sabrina uh, today. She's awesome. She's been a member of ICON here. Um, gosh, she's been with us, I think, just going through this last season. I'm a little bit into last year as well, too, that uh, she jumped on board, and she's awesome. So um, I'm really excited to uh, get to introduce her. Before we do that, though, um, we're going to have worship with Arlene um, for a little bit, uh, and then again, we'll get to get into hearing Sabrina and her message and what, what kind of Lord has spoken to her to speak to us uh, today. So. Awesome. Awesome. We'll see you guys soon. His grace was still 
I just I just thank you for this time of worship. I just want to say thank you, God. I just thank you, Lord, for for loving me unconditionally, God. Because every time I sing these songs, I just I just always think of how I always think about how much I fail you. But you still love me, God. And you still love us even through our rockiest, darkest moments, God. And for that, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. We exalt you and we lift your name up every single day of our lives, God. This morning, I just pray that every heart is open and it's receptive to the word that you're going to deliver this morning, God. We love you. We love you so much. And we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Icon. I am Pastor Sabrina Jennings, and I'm really excited to get to bring the message to y'all today. Um, I am ordained in the United Church of Christ, and uh, Dan invited me to incorporate some of my tradition in today's service. I grew up Seventh-day Adventist, which is a denomination uh, that worships in ways similar to Baptist or other non-liturgical traditions meaning they don't use a book of worship, follow a calendar of scripture readings called the Revised Common Lectionary, or have particular orders of worship. But when I attended seminary at Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary, I became immersed in a new way of worship, one with an expected order, parts of a service such as a prayer of confession, passing of the peace, two to three scripture readings from the lectionary and a service of communion. And I fell in love with with these traditions. Some of you have experienced church in this way. Uh, Maybe you left it. Maybe it felt ritualistic or lofty or devoid of meaning. Others of you have never participated in a tradition like this and words like lectionary and liturgy sound strange and foreign. But in seminary and in joining the UCC, I really developed a love for these traditions. They bind us together as a people and as friends and followers of Jesus. They give sound and taste and common experience to mysterious truths that can never be fully known. And so I want to invite you to join me in one piece of liturgical tradition, which is the prayer, confession, and assurance of pardon. This may seem like kind of an odd selection. I personally am not big into talking about sin and repentance and think that a lot of theology and thought about the subject is used inappropriately and in ways that cause more harm than good. However, it takes but a glance around to recognize that our lives and our communities and our world are not as they should be. People individually and corporately are causing all sorts of harm to ourselves, to neighbor and creation. It's necessary for healing to look inward and to recognize when we have caused harm, admit to our shortcomings, ask for forgiveness and receive pardon. In addition to doing this as individuals, to say such things such as I talked about my friend behind her back and broke her trust, We also have to confess to those things for which together we participate in. We've supported systems that oppress our neighbors. And so this is why we say a prayer of confession together. And I invite you to join me in this. The words will be up on the screen. I invite you to read them aloud with me. Then I'll pause for a moment of reflection and then offer the assurance of pardon. O God of resurrection, we are grieved by the loss of life, suffering, and turmoil that marks our world. 
We are quick to point out others who are to blame for this. Yet we recognize our own faces in the checkout lines with those on a cycle of consumption and disposal without thought for the impact upon your creation. We see the results of thoughtless words and deeds reflected in the voices of people of color, LGBTQ folks, and those with disabilities who call for justice. We can follow the trail of our actions and inactions that lead to tent communities under bridges and lines of cars waiting to receive food. Forgive us divine love and restore us that new life would flow forth. Amen. Friends, in the life of Jesus, we are shown a new way. In the killing of love incarnate, evil thought that it had triumphed. But in Christ's resurrection, all evil was overcome. Out of the tomb came new life, and that life is given freely to us. Recognize its image within yourself and in all, that we will walk in the way of Jesus, that when evil cries victory, we will declare that God is not done, that we will see the restoration of life and justice and peace, and new life will flow forth evermore. In Christ's name, amen. So I don't know about you, but I've been keeping an eye on the Texas COVID numbers since March. How many new cases? How many new deaths? How many hospital beds and ventilators are available? I took screenshots occasionally so that I could look back. Remember when Texas had a case count of 64? That was on March 17th. There were only 140 deaths statewide as of April 6th. In the beginning, I checked the state health department database every day, but now we've been in this place six months. We regularly have five or 6,000 additional cases daily. We've had over 10,500 deaths in Texas, over 10,500. My friend's father was one of those. He died from COVID after being in the hospital for three weeks. And I just read an obituary for a 50-year-old Lockhart man, Brandon Mayo, who died from the disease and is also being mourned by friends and family. I can only handle checking the state numbers once or twice a week now. Meanwhile, the national numbers are so gut-wrenching, I just catch them on the news and don't go out of my way to check them. And this isn't to mention the great number of people who've lost jobs, who've become food insecure, who are stuck at home with their abusers, and all of us who feel lonely, miss seeing our people, want to return to in-person school or work, or wish to travel and do something fun. And we're just tired of being afraid of getting sick or getting someone else sick. Perhaps no place provides such an image of loss of life as the Baudelaire Depression in the Saharan Desert. It once was underwater, completely covered by a lake called Lake Megachad. It was filled with fish and algae and plant life and all sorts of other creatures. It was a life-filled ecosystem that is completely unimaginable when you see what's there today. Just dust. Lots and lots and lots of dust. So much dust that it gets picked up by the winds and it can be seen from outer space. No green thumb could possibly grow something out of that. And so much of our world seems to have turned to dust. Cities are plagued by every form of racist act from murder to harassment to keeping resources away from that side of town. Politics, where elected officials don't even try to cover up what should be scandalous and shameful, but rather manipulate facts and justify actions that are destroying lives. 
Whole countries are being torn apart by war and gang violence, forcing families to flee for their lives, often only to be turned away from the places where they seek shelter. All of this and more. We are face to face with death. According to the Gospel of Luke, after Jesus had been fasting in the desert, the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. In one film adaptation of the life of Jesus, sorry, I can't recall which one, but this scene shows Jesus looking out and seeing not only the glory and splendor of these kingdoms, but also a woman holding an emaciated child, a disabled man lying in the street, and others suffering and in desperate need of salvation. And Jesus is tempted because he is grieved by their pain and he wants to save them. But to save the people while on bent knee to evil would have been no salvation at all. Instead, Jesus cho chose to enter into the suffering with the people and face it. Jesus hangs out with and gets to know intimately children who don't have enough to eat, men in positions of authority who feel ashamed of how they've treated others, a woman who is sick of being sick, and sisters lamenting the death of their brother. Then... Jesus shows them how God can bring new life out of the midst of even this. He doesn't say that their suffering is the will of God. It wasn't God ordained. It wasn't for some mystical purpose. It was not good. Jesus weeps with them. We know death and loss and chaos. And still the divine can spark new life out of even this. So we are resurrection people. And Jesus said, I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus wept with the sisters and raised their brother from the dead. He took a measly meal from a hungry child and used it to feed 500. He sat with Matthew, a tax collector, who had misused his authority and taught him how to freely give. We're living through a terrible, world-changing pandemic and new life is creeping up. New life will burst forth. My friend's father planted seeds all throughout his life for new growth. He left his old home in Mexico and brought his family to a place where they would have more opportunities. With his hands, he helped build a house for his grandchildren. He danced with his granddaughter and me at her quinceanera, and he demonstrated the steps to being a good and godly person. And that continues forward in bringing new life through his grandchildren today. Evil thought that it had triumphed, but we declare that God is not done. The Saharan desert seems pretty done for, but as I learned in Connected, which is a new show on Netflix I highly recommend, even a place that looks as dead and lifeless as the desert is bringing new life. The winds pick up the dust of the dead fish and of the dead plants, all the things that had once thrived there now seem completely lifeless. They're picked up and carried across the ocean on an epic journey where they land finally in the Amazon rainforest, providing essential nutrients that that ecosystem needs to survive. That rainforest is alive because of what comes from that barren land. 
Out of the tomb comes new life. Lockhart recently had a march to support Black Lives Matter. This is the first event of its kind that I can remember since I have lived there for the past 13, 14 years. And I saw Latinos and blacks and whites, grandparents and kids in strollers, all marching together, stepping out from the path of injustice and death that we've been on and declaring that with the legacy of the people who have been oppressed and who have been killed, we are going to march forward into a new way of life. For out of death springs forth new life. And life has been freely given to us and life will flow forth evermore. We come face to face with death and we will see the restoration of life and justice and peace. As we are a resurrection people, and in Christ's resurrection, all evil was overcome. And I would like to just give y'all a benediction, which is another form of the liturgy, which is ascending out as we go out from this time of worship Though we're not gathered together in one physical space, we're gathered in this moment in whatever time and place you are hearing and receiving God's word. And so as you go forth from here, go in the peace of Christ, knowing and believing that though we see death around us, God is at work and life will spring forth ever new. Amen. What a great message, uh, Sabrina. Thank you so much uh, for coming in and sharing uh, with Icon. Um, what an awesome message. And I think that, uh, again, as we pull from these uh, messages and as we come together, gathering online corporately and we're hearing these things, um, we got to take that and we got to apply that to our lives. Yeah. And we got to allow that to change us from the inside out so that in turn, God can use that and change the world around us. So again, thank you so much, Sabrina. Uh, for coming in and for sharing your heart. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Yep. So we have kids service coming up right after this at 1030. We'd love for y'all to jump on and for the kids to enjoy um, our e-kids service. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, thank you guys again so much for tuning in. We'll see you back here same time, uh, same place next week. Um, have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.